Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden and today I'm here to talk about my April reading plans, uh, of which there are many. So I have a ton of readathons that I'm either hosting or participating in and I have a giant stack of books here but I'm gonna say at the beginning I am not gonna read all these books in April, like that's not even the intention, I just wanted to make sure I had like an option for all of these prompts and also there are lots of ones on this list that I could count for a bunch of prompts and I maybe only picked a couple so it's a lot, but I am not gonna like hurt myself, you know? <laughs> um, also, because April is my birthday month, I really want to make an effort to be reading things I'm like extra excited about. Like I just think that'll be a really fun way to like, you know, celebrate the month. So this list is like even more subject to change than usual. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So obviously I am hosting, I'm one of the three hosts for All the Worlds a Page, which is our Shakespeare themed readathon. Um, my wonderful co-hosts are Julia from Shakespeare and Such and Olivia Savannah from Olivia's Catastrophe. I will link both of them down below. Um, and we are all hosting a different genre. So I'm hosting teen comedy um, and Julia is hosting for the history plays and Olivia Savannah is hosting for the tragedies. So be sure to check out their videos if you want more info on that. Um, and then I'm also participating in the Aurelium Magical Readathon, which is hosted by G over book roast. I will link that video down below as well. Um, I'm also participating in Margaret from the Word Nerds um, like readathon or read-along game, TBR game, that's what I'm trying to say, um, which is Fatelin and that's been really fun. I've actually been doing that every month of the year, I just haven't like made a video about it. Um, so I'm doing that and of course I have some read-alongs and book clubs and things. So again, lots of books, let's get into this. And I think the way that makes the most sense to organize this is that I am going to like talk about a book and then I'm gonna mention all of the prompts I'm reading it for all at once rather than coming back to it again. So we'll see if this saves any time. Um, but one I want to read is Girls Made of Snow and Glass by Melissa Bashardust and I'm definitely reading this one because I'm using this for the prompt of, um, for the Fablin prompt to go to your DMs and the last person you talk to ask them to recommend a book to you. And that was my friend Julia and she picked for me to read this book which is perfect because I've been meaning to read this forever. It's actually on my, um, on TBR longest shelf so I definitely need to read this. It is a Snow White retelling that I believe focuses on the actual like very close bond between the Snow White character and the stepmother which I like. I believe there's also a sapphic romance um, between the Snow White character and another girl so I've heard pretty good things about this so I'm very excited to finally be getting to it. You know I could cut out quite a lot of time if I just stop saying the generic like I'm excited about this uh, but we'll see if I actually remember. Black Boy Joy, 17 Stories Celebrating Black Boyhood, edited by Kwame Mobalia, um, and this is by a bunch of different black authors, um, most black men, but then there are also some non-binary authors as well, um, and it's exactly what it says in the title. I am very excited for this. There are some authors that I already know I really love, uh, let's see, like Kwame Mobalia, Varian Johnson, um, Jason Reynolds, of course, and then some that I haven't read but I'm very much looking forward to. And I'm counting this for the Othello prompts, which is to read a book by a black author, and Edward III, which is to read a book that is either anonymous, like by an anonymous author, or written by multiple authors, which this one is. I had to stop myself from saying, so I'm very excited about this. I'm gonna break myself of that, of that habit, you guys. I really am. I also want to read Rima's Rebellion by Margarita Engel. Um, this is a very short novel in verse, it's like 200 pages, that is set in Cuba um, and it's based on, let me find the word for them, um, Las Mambisas, the fierce women veterans who fought during Cuba's wars for independence. Feminists from many backgrounds have gathered in voting clubs to demand suffrage and equality for women, but not everybody wants equality for all, especially not for someone like Rima. In 1920s Cuba, illegitimate children like her are bullied and shunned. Um, so it's about Rima getting involved with women's suffrage. Um, I love Love the historical context it sounds like it's going to talk about and I haven't heard many people talk about this one and I'm using this for let's see I actually have a list because I have so many different prompts to keep track of I'm using this for the Henry the fourth part one which is to read a book featuring royalty or rebellion obviously rebellion is in the title and then for Henry V I'm using this for the weapon or militant word on the cover or in the title um, I think rebellion would count as a militant word then I have masks and shadows by Stephanie Burgess this is a historical I want to say it's historical fantasy, but it might just be historical fiction, actually. Um, and like, I don't know how to explain this one, but I've been really excited about it for a long time. Um, I know it is very political. I believe there's like some mystery elements, and our main character is a young woman who I think she's like a very, very young widow, um, and she comes to the court in Austria, I think, and she ends up getting involved with this man named Carlo Morelli, um, who's the most renowned castrato singer in Europe. Um, and I just think it sounds really, really interesting. And I'm using this for for Richard II, which is to read the book, read a book that is the first in the series. There is a novella in this series that is listed as book two, so I'm counting this. And then for Aurelium, I'm using it for the demonology prompt, which is to read a book that has shadow in the title. Um, I should have mentioned for Aurelium, I have no idea what like 
career path I want to do. So basically I am reading, I'm going to try and fill every prompt um, and then for the next round where we actually have to focus on our like selection, um, by then I hope to have actually decided what I want to do. So that's the plan. Then for the King John prompt, that is to read a book that was on a past TBR, and I have Ancestor Approved, Intertribal Stories for Kids, edited by Cynthia Lytic smith um, This is another um, anthology. I actually ended up picking quite a few short story collections or anthologies, um, which I don't usually read so many in a month, but um, I'm excited. We'll see how I do. Um, and so this is a bunch of different Native American and First Nations authors all writing different stories that are all set at the same powwow. Um, and I've heard really, really lovely things about this. This is another one where there are several authors I already know I really enjoy, um, and then several that I haven't read but I'm very excited to. So I think this is going to be really wonderful, and I keep mentioning it. I've been excited about this book since it came out, and I've owned it for a long time, or like since it came out, and I still have not read it. So that needs to change. Then for the King Lear prompt, that is to listen to an audiobook, and the reason for that um, is that like King Lear would be so different if characters just like listened to each other and communicated, um, which I love that reasoning for the prompt. That's another reason that you might want to check out our announcement videos if you want more context for these prompts. Um, but yeah, I just, I love that theming. Um, so I picked Luck of the Titanic by Stacey Lee. I do currently have the, uh, the audiobook checked out for my library. Um, you guys know that audiobooks are very rough for me. <laughs> I don't do that many, but um, I sometimes find them useful to get me past like a point in a story when I'm stalled at, because I have really enjoyed Stacey Lee's books that I've read before, but for some reason the first couple chapters of setup weren't really grabbing me. So I think what's probably going to happen is I'm going to listen to the audio for long enough to get like involved, invested in the story. And then I'm gonna get tired of listening to an audiobook and just want to read it myself and that's what I'm gonna do. Um, but I think that still counts. I didn't even mention what this was about. Um, this is about a group of Chinese acrobats, uh, which is based on a true story, um, and they end up on the Titanic. So yeah. I don't usually like Titanic stories, so we'll see how this goes, but I do really enjoy Stacey Lee, which is why I took a chance on this book anyway. Then probably one of the books I am looking forward to most is a reread, um, and that is Still Starcrossed by Melinda Taub. I'm going to be buddy reading this with Julia. Um, this is one of my all-time favorite books, so like Julia, I hope you know what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> uh, but this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling that is kind of an, it's set after the events of that play, um, and we're following Rosaline and Benvolio as the main characters. And in this novel, um, the peace between the Capulets and the Montagues has not lasted after the events of Romeo and Juliet, and so to try and fix that, um, the Prince of Verona is like, I know, I'm just gonna make a different Capulet and Montague, like, marry each other and make nice, um, because that kind of thing, you know, went so well the first time. Um, and so he decides that Benvolio and Rosaline are gonna have to get married to each other. Um, and if neither of them wants this, um, they both have very specific reasons for disliking the other person and for not trusting them. Like, they really can't stand each other, they definitely don't want to get married to each other, and so they realize that if they can work together to figure out who is sabotaging the attempts at peace, then there will be no reason for them to have to get married. But of course, as time goes on, maybe they don't hate being engaged to each other. Um, this is just like really, really good. Hate to love. I really like the supporting characters. I love Rosaline as a main character, and I really love Benvolio as well. Um, and I think also this is not a this is not a difficult book if you're not used to reading Shakespeare. Like there is some kind of Shakespeare flavored language. There's enough to make it feel like it is a Shakespeare retelling, but it's not like hard to read. I think. Um, yeah, like I said, this is one of my favorite books of all time, so I'm very much looking forward to rereading this. It's been a while, and um, yeah, I, I think it's only appropriate that I celebrate my birthday by reading one of my favorite Shakespeare retellings, or just like favorite books in general. I got so wrapped up in how excited I am about that book, I didn't tell you any of the prompts I'm reading it for. <laughs> this one's counting for a lot, so I'm using it for Love's Labor's Lost, which is to read a book with a complicated romance, um, which is the one I'm using it for, or you could read a book that you think will break genre stereotypes. Um, I'm also using it for The Merry Wives of Windsor, which is to read a book that features female friendship or a female main character you think you'll love. I already know I love Rosaline. Um, and Much to Do About Nothing, read a book with your, one of your favorite tropes, Hate to Love, and then kind of the marriage of convenience slash inconvenience trope I also love. Um, and then for Aurelium, I'm using it for The Art of Illusion um, class or prompt, which is to read a book that has a trope you like. And then speaking of books that I think I'll love or know that I'll love to celebrate my birthday, um, I have Lake Lore by Anna Marie Macklemore, who is one of my favorite authors. Everybody knows this. I talk about them all the time. Um, and this is their most recent release. It follows two non-binary teens, and I believe there is like lake magic, some kind of world under the lake. I don't really know that much about it, to be honest, and I don't really need to. Um, I just know that I really love their books. And I'm using this for Twelfth Night, which is to read a queer book, Julius Caesar, which is to read a book that you think will stab you in the feels. Their books always do. Antony and Cleopatra, to read a book where you enjoy the writing style. I love Anna Marie McElmore's writing style. 
Um, and then Henry VIII is to read a book that is dedicated to a woman. Um, and the dedication for this one is to my mother, who taught me that the way our brains work holds enough brilliance to light up worlds. Which I already love. Um, and then I'm also using this for the measure for measure prompt, which is the problem play prompt for the for team comedy, which is my team. Um, and the prompt for that one is to read a book that deals with some kind of issue and then to choose like a real world thing to do about it to get involved in some way. Um, and like I said in my announcement, there are sadly a lot of things that you could choose from. I also want to give a quick content warning because I'm going to be discussing things like transphobia, homophobia, and suicide. Um, so if that will, if you would rather not hear that, um, I'm going to put a timestamp down below. So please feel free to skip that part. But I chose this book for that prompt because, um, as I said, Anne-Marie McElmore is a queer author. And if you guys aren't aware, in several states in the US, um, including Texas and Florida, but there are attempts being made in other states as well. Like the don't say gay be bell that like you can't um, use the word gay when you're teaching kids that like you're not allowed to talk about it. And then in Texas um, there is a law that is currently in place. I know they're ch challenging it but I believe it is still currently on the books um, that says you can prosecute parents who give their children support for their trans identity, um, like medical coverage, that you can prosecute that as child abuse, um, which is really really disgusting. Like these lawmakers are making it very clear that they would rather children be dead than be happy in a way that they don't understand. And it is just infuriating. It quite literally is a matter of life and death. Um, like when you have children die by suicide because people will not accept who they are, they are absolutely old enough to make the choice about who they are. Like it just... <laughs> And like their for their parents for like listening to that and honoring that for that to be considered child abuse is just disgusting. Um, so anyway, so I know I want to do a donation for some of the groups working to combat these laws. Um, outside of that, I would like to do other things as well. So I'm going to I haven't decided what else I'm going to do. Then another book that I am pretty sure I'm going to love is Whispering Twilight by Melissa McShane. This is the fourth book in the Extraordinary series, which is a series I have really been enjoying. Um, it's a series of companion novels that are a historical fantasy. It's like um, alternate history plus magic that is like the Napoleonic War era. Um, and I have really been enjoying these. I've been really enjoying Melissa McShane as an author and um, we are following a character who we met in the third book. Her name is Bess. And she's an extraordinary speaker, which means that she can... Um, she can, it's like telepathy, I think, and each of the books um, has, follows a different main character and there is a romance plot, but there's a lot of other things going on as well. And it never feels like the female main characters like are like that that's like the only thing motivating them or anything, which I really appreciate. They are very capable and they have really interesting storylines in addition to the romance. Um, and this one I think is going to involve the trope of like she hasn't ever met the like her love interest like in person but they have some kind of connection like through their telepathy um which i think just sounds very interesting and i'm using this for as you like it which is read a book that has multiple love stories or that is a book in a companion series which this one is henry the sixth part one which is to read a book that has multiple settings this one does and for the aurelium prompt for shape shifting which is to read a book that has a creature with claws on the cover um because this one has I think he's like a leopard or a cheetah i'm not sure which but they definitely do have claws even if you can't really see them in this picture I'm already talking way more than I meant to, so gotta keep going. <laughs> um, then I also finally want to read Tales from Shakespeare, the illustrated edition by Charles and Mary Lamb, which is illustrated by a bunch of different people. Um, Arthur Rackham, W. Packett, and Robert Anning Bell. I really love Arthur Rackham, so I'm very excited for that. And this is just like a storybook version of um, Shakespeare's plays, like not all of them, but some of the more well-known ones, and like rewritten as kind of like short stories. Um, yeah, I have been meaning to read this since I think our first round of All the Worlds a Page, and I still haven't gotten to it, and I would like to finally do that. Um, and I'm using this for the Midsummer Night's Dream prompt, which is to read a book featuring performance, and also, like, Midsummer Night's Dream is in here, so obviously it's going to be. Um, for Henry the Fourth Part Two, which is to read a book that has comic a comic relief character. There are going to be comic relief characters in this in various plays. And then for Aurelium, the prompt for lore is to read a book that is mythology inspired, and several of the plays in here, um, like several of Shakespeare's plays in general are inspired by mythology. So that's what I'm counting for this one. Third time's a charm, I guess, right? Like this is round three of our readathon and I still haven't read this book. So that's going to change, I hope. I'm also very excited to get to A Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft. Um, this is one of my most anticipated releases, so I won't go into the synopsis too much because I think I just read the synopsis in that video. Um, but I am very excited for the atmosphere, the vibes, the romantic relationship, the main characters. Um, I just have a really good feeling about Alison Saft, like her books and the kinds of things she writes. I just feel like I'm going to really get on with them. 
Um, and the prompts for this one is Merchant of Venice, read a book by a Jewish author, and The Tempest, which is to read a book featuring magic. Um, this is a fantasy book. I don't know if it's like historical fantasy or like fantasy set in a different world, but um, regardless, I'm excited to finally read a book from an author that I think I'm going to love because I need to stop just like stockpiling <laughs> books by authors I haven't read because I'm convinced I'm gonna love them. So we're gonna try and not do that. I also want to read Serendipity. I told you there were a lot of um, anthologies on this list. Ten Romantic Tropes Transformed, edited by Marissa Meyer. This is another one that I talked about in that anticipated releases video. So each author writes about a different romantic trope and kind of puts a twist on it, I think. And I'm using this for, let's see, Pericles, which is to read a book by multiple authors or a book featuring water in some way. I'm using that for the multiple authors part. And then for Aurelium, the Spells and Incantations prompt is to read a, like, a short story or an essay. Um, or you can read a short story collection or an essay collection. Then I also finally want to finish the Alex and Ada series. This is a graphic novel series. This is the third volume, which is the final one, by Jonathan Luna and Sarah Vaughn. Um, so I thought I needed a few short books on this list. Um, so yeah, like I remember really enjoying the first two volumes and I just have been meaning to finish this series for a long time. And I'm using this for the Aurelium prompt for Psionics and Divination, which is to read a book set in the future. Um, this is one of the only ones I really had that fit that, um, especially because I don't read a ton of sci-fi. Like I have some sci-fi that I want to read, but this is the one that I think I'm most in the mood for. And again, I need some short things. Um, so yeah, I'm finally going to check that series off, I hope. Um, and then another book that I'm very excited for that, you know, perfect for my birthday month because, um, well, you guys will see. It's, it's pretty much my brand. Um, I Know What I Am, The Life and Times of Artemisia Gentileschi by Gina Siciliano. I am so excited for this. So this was a present from my lovely friend Yvette from Book Cave because she knows me. Um, she knows that I am very, very into Artemisia Gentileschi as a historical figure, as an artist, as a person. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit obsessed with her, as we all know. And this is a like graphic novel, um, or kind of, yeah, I guess it would be considered a graphic novel, that um, is like in pen drawings, which I just think is super interesting, and it's about her life. And I'm very excited to have an excuse to read this, and I'm using this for the Henry VIII prompt, which is to read a book about a woman you adore. I don't think I need to explain why I picked this one. Okay guys, we're in the home stretch here. <laughs> I told you, I'm not gonna read all these books. I just wanted to have lots of options, which I obviously do. Um, okay, wait, now I'm all messed up. I, have, I need my list in front of me. So I also finally wanna get to Dreamer's Pool by Juliette Merlier. Um, this is for kind of a part two of a vlog, so I definitely wanna get to this. And um, I'm using this for a few different prompts. I'm using this for Coriolanus, which is to read a book that was recommended to you. Um, my friend Huck from Badger Reads definitely, I think, would count as recommending this to me. Um, and then for Aurelium, it's for the restoration prompt, which is to read a book featuring healers. Um, and I think that's especially appropriate because I know that's one of Huck's favorite tropes or character types, and this book does feature a healer. And then for Fablin, I'm also using this um, for the fantasy book. I need to read one fantasy book per month. Um, so yeah, that's that, that one. This one is like a little bit of a chunk, but I'm excited to finally get to it. Oh, I was doing really well, and then I said that again. That's okay. We're still doing better. And then I think another one of the books that I am most excited for um, during my birthday month, that is A Single Thread of Moonlight by Laura Wood. This is a um, kind of Cinderella retelling, and I loved A Sky Painted Gold by this author, and then I hated, um, what is the name of it? Under a Dancing Star, which is a Much Ado About Nothing prequel that I despised. Um, so I'm hoping to go for a two out of three. <laughs> but even, like, I read a little bit of the beginning of this one, and I already really, really like it. I already like it much better than the last book I read from her. Um, so I'm hoping that that was just, like, a fluke, and that I'm going to continue to really enjoy her as an author. But, um, yeah, it's, like, a loosely inspired Cinderella retelling. It involves dressmaking, which I love. Um, also, I really like The Sound of the Male Love Interest. I really liked the love interest in A Sky Painted Gold. So I, like, couldn't believe she had another book out that I hadn't heard of, even though I still need to read another book from her. See, I need to not stockpile authors because then this happens and it's embarrassing. I'm using this for Cymbeline, which is to read a book that is based on something. This is a Cinderella retelling. Um, Hamlet, which is to read a long book or a five-star prediction. This is actually both. Uh, for me. Then Troilus and Cressida, which is Julia's um, problem play selection. We each picked a problem play to include as part of our uh, prompts, um, is to read a retelling or a book that involves mythology. So again, Cinderella retelling. I can't wait. Then I will also definitely be reading, because I am a guest on the read-along, The Mad Ship by Robin Hobb. This is the second book in the Life Ship Traders trilogy. Um, I will link our live show for the first book, which was a very interesting discussion. Um, yeah, I am liking this series overall more than the first series I read from this author, but I'm still deciding how I feel. This book does cover a lot of prompts though, which I love. 
Um, so for The Two Gentlemen of Verona, it is to read a book you're unsure about. Again, I've had very mixed experience with Robin Hobb so far, and I liked the first book, but I didn't love it. So I'm hoping I love this one more. Um, also for Timon or Timon of Athens, which is to read an expensive book, because these editions, I really like these editions, but they're pretty pricey for paperbacks. It's like close to $20, I think. And Romeo and Julia is to read a hyped book. I think everything Robin Hobb touches is very hyped. And read the sixth part one is to read an ambitious book. Like this is certainly ambitious. It's almost 900 pages in this edition. Um, and then for Aurelium, I'm using it for the inscription prompt, which is to read an intimidating book. Same reason. It is very long, and I also am a little worried that I won't get on with it, so that makes it extra intimidating. Then for the Aurelium prompt for Conjuration, um, that is to read a book that has a light, light source on the cover, I want to read Rose and the Lost Princess by Holly Webb. You can see there are stars in the background. Um, I read the first Rose book in March, so you'll see that in my wrap-up, but I really, really enjoyed it, and I want to continue sooner rather than later, so that's what I'm doing. Again, I do want to throw in a few short books on this list. That would be nice to myself. Um, then for Fablin, the food title, like food in the title or on the cover is one of the prompts that I got for this month. Um, and one of the ones that I thought of was the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows. This is another pretty short book and it is, um, epistolary, which is interesting. And I've heard good things about it. I also want to watch the film adaptation at some point, but I want to read the book first. So that's another one I'd like to get to. Then um, a book I am excited but also sad to be reading because it's like the end of a series I've been loving, uh, but that is Long Shadow by Olivia Atwater. Um, this is the third and final full-length novel in the Regency fairy tale series. There are a couple of short stories um, that are going to be part of that, but like this is the last official novel or full-length novel. And um, yeah, it's a Regency fantasy series involving fae, and I love it so much. <laughs> like the two first books in the series, like I, they were some of my favorite books I read last year, and this is a companion series, and we're actually following a character who we know from the other books, and I don't know much about this one except that um, Long Shadow is one of the fey lords that we know of who's like really bad, um, so he's like the main antagonist, and I know that this book involves a sapphic romance. Um, so yeah, I love this author's writing and world and like stories and everything, so I'm excited but sad to be reading the last one. And I'm using this for The Two Noble Kinsmen, which is to read a book that is a series ender or one that you've been putting off, which is, this one is kind of both. Um, Aurelium for Animal Studies is to read a quick read, and then Fablin, um, every month I, one of my requirements is I have to read a sequel. So that's what I'm doing for this one. And then a couple other book club or read-along books. Um, I'm going to be rereading Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte because I will be a guest um, on the discussion for this book as part of the Bronte along. Again, I will link that info down below. Um, and I'm using this for several prompts as well, actually a lot of them. Um, for The Company of Errors, a book that has a complex family <laughs> or complex family dynamics, I mean, it's true. <laughs> um, the Taming of the Shrew is to read a book that has mixed reviews, which this one very much does, at the time of publication and still today. Um, Titus Andronicus, which is to read a book that has a family focus. Again, family's important. It's like messed up family, but it is a focus of the book. Um, Henry VI Part Three is to read a book featuring manipulation. I think there are definitely some manipulative characters in this. Aurelium for Artificery is to read a book that has an earth setting. This does take place in our world. Um, Fablin for winter setting because I think there is some parts of the book, like I seem to remember some scenes taking place during winter, so I think this would count. And then also for a book that is um, published prior to 2020. Um, one of my like special powers for Fablin is that I can combine, like once a month, I can combine two books, two prompts, and read one book that fulfills those, because normally you can't do that. Um, yeah, this is one of those books that I love in spite of itself. <laughs> like it's not a, an all-time favorite book for me. It's not a book I could ever see myself giving five stars, but it just like captures my imagination and my heart and my emotions in very specific ways. Like I just, anyway, you'll hear my thoughts when we read it, but I totally understand why many people loathe this book, but I don't. <laughs> and then another read along reread, um, this one I'm very, very excited for. So uh, that is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. This is for Pastic Classics. Taylor is going to be hosting the live show and I read this book for the first time last year and I'm already excited to reread it again, if that tells you anything. Um, yeah, I really love this book and um, I'm going to be using this for, let's see, The Winter's Tale, which is to give a series or an author a second chance, or you could read a book that has an adaptation. Um, that's the way that I'm going for this. But I also think, like this is my prompt, so I can add an interpretation if I want, I think. Um, but I would also say that you could count a reread because that's second chance, right? Even if you enjoyed it the first time. 
And then Olivia Savannah's pick for the problem play was All's Well That Ends Well, and that is to read a book that you think will have a happy ending. And I know that um, there, there are a lot of non-happy things that do happen in this book, but I would definitely say that you can consider the ending of this one to be happy. And then for Aurelium, I'm using it for the alchemy prompt, which is to read a book featuring romance, because I it does and I love it. Um, and then for Fablin, is to read a book that has a character, that follows a character with strong convictions. Um, and I actually think John Thornton and Margaret Hale would definitely both count for this, although I was thinking more of Margaret. But um, yeah, love this, already excited to reread it. And then finally, a couple of very, very short books that I'm tacking on here at the end. Um, one of them is The Latch Key. This is actually one of those novellas in the Regency Fairy Tale series by Olivia Atwater. Um, I know this is set after the events of the first book, but I don't know, I don't know where in the series besides that. Um, but yeah, it follows Elias, and um, I can't really say too much about the premise because that spoils some things, but Again, bittersweet. I'm excited to read more in this world, but I'm sad that I'm running out of things to read. Um, and I'm using this for Macbeth, which is to read a short book, and then for Aurelium, Elemental Studies, to read a book under 100 pages. And this is a novella. It's very short. Actually, this might even be closer to a short story. It is very short. And then finally, I think the last book I'm going to be talking about, I hope I haven't forgotten anything because <laughs> this is already a lot, uh, but that is The Frost Fair Affair by Tansy Rainer Roberts. I actually have ordered a copy of this, um, all the, the rest of the series actually, this book, and there's one more that is currently like widely available to purchase um, because I really, really loved the first one. If you've seen my uh, second part of my February wrap-up, you'll know that I really loved the first story in this series, and I just really, really want to continue it. So I'm using it for the Aurelian Prompt for Astronomy, which is to read a book that is at the top of your TBR because I just keep thinking about this series. I really want to get back to it. It's really lovely and cozy and it just makes me really happy and I'm very much looking forward to reading the rest of these series. And I'm also using it for the Fablin prompt which is to read a book by an author who is not from your country. Um, Tansy Rader Roberts is Australian so that's what I'm using for this one. Okay so that is my list of possible selections for my April reading. Um, again, I'm not trying to read all of these. I just wanted to have a lot of options. I wanted to know that I could cover every prompt um, with these books and I'll just be picking and choosing as I go and um, swapping in things as I like because um, I really want to get better about allowing myself to change my mind about TBRs and not feel bad about it. Also, because it's my birthday month, I want to be extra sure that I'm reading things I'm excited about. So, Please comment down below, let me know if you are participating in any of these readathons or read-alongs, and let me know a book you're really excited for. Thank you guys so much for watching, I will see you soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!